So once again, I'm going to start from scratch. My name is Vincent, super pleased to be with you all for this uh, coffee break number 10. And we're going to talk about parametric filters within Photoshop. Yes, Photoshop. So it's a bit new and fresh because generally I do um, uh, topics about Substance 3D. Yes, there is a relationship, of course, because you can do these filters for Photoshop with Substance 3D Designer. And that's what we're going to see today. Uh, hello, Dan, by the way, who is in the chat as well. Uh, yes, just get cats and they will ruin your life. That's, uh, that's awesome. So a bit of context, uh, if you know, um, since one year, uh, for, yeah, last year we have introduced the Substance 3D engine, engine within Photoshop, which means that you are able to import Substance material to display into a layer with all the properties that you are used to have in a Substance material, which means parameters, of course, a nice quality of render, but also it comes with the 3D engine, which means that you can change the lighting and get some different effect to adapt to your needs. So let me share my screen and we're going to see how to access uh, to uh, the filters. Filters are new. Um, actually, it came with the Photoshop beta, the version uh, starting version 21, uh, 25.1. 1. Hello, Hesger. Uh, I hope I see it well in the chat. Nice to meet you. And uh, so how to install it? So it's easy. Here is a Creative Cloud desktop that you sh I assume you know. And if you go into application, so it's in French, but uh, it's because uh, a Creative Cloud desktop is following my uh, OS language. And as you have noticed, I'm French. So you just have to go application and application, beta application here. And the first one should be, I assume, Photoshop. So you just have to install it from here and you will have access um, to the parametric filters. Let's see how it looks. So just to talk about this, we said, okay, we have material. These are, these are great. Uh, I think you can, if you go here, if you hear some sounds, sometimes it's just my cat, which is exploring the stuff. So yeah, if you look at materials here, you will get access to the substance material. But in our case, we said, okay, materials are great, but what if we can make filters because if you know a bit our ecosystem, you know that the filters that you will find in uh, Substance 3D Sampler and Substance 3D Painter are firstly, firstly made for most of them with Substance 3D Designer. So why not taking advantages of this for Photoshop as well? And that's exactly what we're going to do now. So to, you see, I have the menu here. If it does not appear in your case, you just have to go to a filter, parametric filters. And for the parametric property just below, they are they are going to appear when you just select one of the, of these of these uh, uh, filters. So as you can see, I I give a, I gave a spoiler. Uh, you have your filter here, that, so it means that you can create your own. Uh, we didn't talk too much about it since we released the parametric filter. We say that it exists, that you, you can use them, and, and they are great, honestly. Uh, because they are non-destructive, you can accumulate them and you can have some new effects. But to me, the, the key differentiator, what makes them great, is that I can create my own filters depending on my need. And that's what you are going to be able to do as well. I'm going to show you the beast, which is just here. And I'm going to put it out, <laughs> because if not, it will ruin my life. Yeah, this way I'm sure <laughs> I don't have a, a cat disconnection or something like that. I should have kept it because generally when you put cat in a YouTube video, you make more views. Okay, so how to use these parametric filters? So to explain this live stream, I'm going to show you how it works first, the, the properties, etc. Then I'm going to show you how to add one a filter from yourself and then how to make them, how to make one simple, uh, another one simple, but which is a material and another one a bit more complex. Once again, at any point, if you have any question, you have the chat, interrupt me, that's fine. So how does it work? This is super easy. Once you have this panel, you just click on it. Sorry, first you have to make sure 
I'm going to do it again. And uh, this is a picture of a bag that my girlfriend made. So I'm just going to collapse everything to get just one layer. It will be easy. So make sure it's selected and then just click on the filter you want to apply. And boom, you have it. So what just happened is uh, it creates um, a smart layer first here and then it applies a smart filters on top of it where which will contain your uh, current parametric filters. The great thing with that is it's non-destructive, which means that at any point your original layer is there, so you won't destroy anything playing with parametric filters. At the bottom, you see that now you have some um, parameter which appears. They are generally separated in uh, two parts. First, you have the resolution, which is common to any kind of, uh, of uh, filter. So you have draft to ultra, like any uh, every uh, setting like this one. The higher, the better for quality, but at the price of uh, ne uh, necessary uh, of being a bit slower because you, you need more processing time. So medium is fine by default. Um, another thing which will um, uh, play a role in the processing time is the size of your picture. So just make sure that's something you have to you have to take in account. If you put like a 10,000 by 10,000, it will take a lot of time. So maybe it's better to make sure that the resolution is working. But no worries, you can go high, but not not uh, that high in resolution. Okay, so just below you have the properties which are different for each, um, each filters. And these properties are defined by uh, the artist who made this filter. So it's someone in Substance Designer who pick and say, okay, I want this effect intensity, this fine detail. So um, that's how it works. First of all, you we always start with presets if the, the artist has defined some. And here you see, for example, you have like this soften effect which gives a specific mood you have like a directional painting so once again this is something that you can define and in that case that an artist defined when he, he, he or she created th this filter I'm going to move a bit this bar right now the thing uh, the implementation of the parametric filter right now are made uh, as a plugin uh, which means that there is some limitation not that much but still uh, let's be transparent one of them being that when i move a slider you see that the changes are not applied real time uh, you have to release the button here so it's applied like like this effect intensity like that but you cannot fine tune moving you have to move release move release move release this is how any plugin in photoshop works it's not related to this one in particular that's the the behavior okay so now what if i want to um, change the effect well that's easy you just click on another filter so just clicking here i have this uh, nice uh, duotone result i can change the color here with something like this you see once again it does not change yet i have to validate my choice that's how it's made now let's say that i want to apply um, you can accumulate multiple filters uh, how do you do that well you just have to hold alt and click on the additional um, filter you want to apply so now i have my uh, smart uh, smart filter with two parametric filters so the latest one is on top something that um, i hope will improve in the future uh, if we are able is to grab the name of the parametric filter so this way if we have three or four we we, we know which which is uh, which is which it's easier a cool tip is here if you double click on any parametric filter you have access to the blending mode so you can choose and get something like uh, that make more sense for you. For example, I like this one to uh, to keep the details of the old painting, but to reapply the new color. I think it gives something really cool. So that's up to you. That's here. And finally, uh, well, I think, uh, uh, oh yes, you have the transform here. Transform is uh, something which allows you to, to offset, for example, um, the result. Honestly, for filter, it's not that uh, that's used. We generally use this for materials, substance-ready materials that you would use here. 
for filter it does not does not make any sense not that much at least because you want to keep it aligned with the the original result okay so let's hide it you will see that in some cases uh, um, we have other one which is lighting I, i'm going to explain why so now we have seen how it works which is nice and as i said at the beginning you also have the your filter uh, um, space which is where you are going well to add your own filter and that's where they will be displayed so you see that i have some of them this three one i made them yesterday because yesterday i streamed in spanish the same content so i made this one uh, which allows me to show you how to delete it first how to apply it is the same for example if i click on this this will be applied directly this is like a pixel art uh, filter that i made something like that uh, yeah you see all of this i made it um, within substance 3d designer uh, you can simplify the coloring you can put borders for the pixel like that um, if you know the limitation are your knowledge with Substance 3D Designer. By the way, if you are a Photoshop user and you are new to Substance 3D Designer, I'm going to make a really extremely short introduction, but I would really recommend to watch my uh, other live stream, which is Introduction to Substance 3D Designer. This way you will know how to, to use it and be more proficient uh, to make your first filters. In in this case, I will just overview some, some steps, not explaining the details, but more the, the logic. So I have also this new, uh, for example, I made this uh, posterizer, I call it. Uh, and if you look it in Substance 3D Designer, it looks like something like that. And this, by the way, we are going to, I'm going to explain from start to the end how to make this one uh, just after. So. If you are new to designer, uh, this is how it looks. It's a, a nodal system, which means that uh, you have nodes and uh, each node, it's like a bit this game you have in Windows to make the uh, cakes, where you start with the base and then you add some cream and then you add some chocolate, maybe some fruit, etc. Well, the logic is the same. You, you look from left to right and you can say, okay, I have these stripes. I want to repeat them to change the angle. Uh, then I have this image, I want to pass it to black and white, I want to make some change, etc. Up to the point you go to the end where you have your final results. So that's the main logic. Once again, I have a two hours introduction that would save you a lot of time. And after this live stream, I really invite you, if you're interested to make filters or other things with Substance Designer, to watch this. Now, uh, what we're going to do here is first how to add new filter when when they are ready Well, you have this first this uh, small plus button here So you just go here. It opens the document in my case. For example uh, I'll go in uh, my project because I'm trying to stay organized. I have my projects here whip and here I have my last stream. So for example, I made some assets, so in French, in Spanish. So if I look at this one, I could choose one of these and uh, just upload it. You see it's here already. So I, I won't do it in that case, but you, you get the idea. Now, how to delete them. So it's a bit more hidden. You just have to hold Control or I think Command if you are uh, on Mac, Command or Option, I'm just letting you try. And you just select it and you do uh, trash bin and yet then it's deleted if you you can make multiple selection holding control once again so click click and delete that and then you see i have this one and i'm going to show you so you see that i have three where you see directly the the result by default when you import sbsr the substance engine within photoshop will generate for you this uh, thumbnail but in that case here you see that there is not why uh, it's because uh, you see that there is like a, a ball which is a shadow ball which means that this filter ultimately will uh, generate a substance material so let's click on it and boom uh, it gives this so it's a i wanted to simulate a water color effect when you paint on a on a, on a page um, uh, with the aquarelle, for example, it could give something like that. So I put, I can change the brush intensity. I have a, a border spread, for example, that I will put the other way, something like that and border contrast. Well, I can play, that's cool. Uh, lots of stuff to do. And it could be 
um, a flat image, but in that case, I wanted to make a material, which means that you can, if you look at the properties at the bottom, you now have lighting properties. And if I go here, I can change. It's like um, you have to ima uh, imagine that it's lit by the top, more or less. So you can, I can change the rotation of the where the light comes from. I can also change the height. Imagine like a sun, it's uh, higher or lower. Well, you can control that here. So the higher I put it, well, the more, the flatter the result will be, but you will have more, more, li um, more light, of course. Why? Because, well, the, as, the, um, as the light comes from top, there is almost no shadow on the result. So I like to get something from the side like that, for example, so, or even at zero, so it's really on the side. You can also change the color to, to fit the mood. So it gives me interesting controls, in my opinion, that I like to, to use, something like that, for example. So I could have done everything in Designer and say, okay, just generate a flat image. There is notes that allows you to do that. But in my case, that, that's not uh, what I wanted to do. So let's delete that. Um, so what we're going to see first right now is going to Designer and we're going to create a really simple filter uh, so you get the logic of it. So we are going to create once again a really simple flat which means when I say flat, it means that it will just generate one image. And then uh, we are going to make a simple one as well, but that will generate a full material. And finally, we'll make uh, a one which is a bit more complex. Just looking at the, the chat, two seconds. Uh, SG, I love this so much. I've been wanting to make custom filter for Photoshop for ages. Being able to do it through Designer is awesome. Um, <laughs> And the stream cat issue. Yes, I agree uh, with, with you, Esger. Um, especially before, let's say, the only option to make custom filter with control parameters, etc. If I'm not wrong, was um, by coding. Either you know JavaScript, UXD, or there may be other feature, but you have to be uh, a coder in uh, minimum at minimum. So it means that it's really. Uh, um, reduce the number of people who does that and also the number of artists. Uh, so this way, even if a uh, designer is a, is a, you have a nodal approach that you have learned to understand, yet it's way easier uh, and more uh, intuitive than uh, pure coding, for example. So let's go and ma let's make our first uh, filter. So I'm going to do control N to create a new graph. And as I want to start, uh, and make uh, everything from scratch, I'm going to take an empty graph. So once again, I won't get into the details of how designer works. Just uh, uh, follow me, just watch what's happened. I'm going to comment, but not all the details. If you want all the details and how this awesome software works, l watch my uh, live stream, my other uh, video. So empty, so when I have an empty, I have an empty graph. As I, as I explained, we're going to connect nodes up to the point uh, we have the result we want. So here I'm just going to make an effect where the layer will be, there will be a swirl warp effect on top of it. So first thing first, as it's a filter, the first thing I want to do is to grab the information with, which is present on the layer. Um, that's uh, a filter by definition is something, something that will modify a content. So that's what we're going to do to grab the content what we need is a node called input, input color, because it's a colored layer. So input color, it's four channels, red, green, blue, and alpha. The four can be used um, at our advantage. So we'll start just by the color right now. So we have this input and at the end, we know that we want to output the result to the layer, well, to the new layer, which is created by the, the engine. So to do this, we have an output one. So we have the entry of the information and we have uh, the, um, the exit of the information. If I just click uh, connect this to this, well, I will have the same result, which will be output. output. So now we have to put some uh, process within both. And I said I want to make a swirl effect. So there is a node which is called swirl. 
So watch out if you are new, there is color grayscale. If you are working in color, which means it's represented by the yellow dot. If not, it's a gray dot. So in our case, we want to be stay consistent. Oops, it's not this one, sorry. Um, swirl. And take the swirl color. If not, it, you will have a compatibility issue. So what I'm going to do is just connect this here and connect this here. So now grab the input, apply your swirl effect and send this to the new uh, layer. That said, uh, it's really hard to work right now because we don't know what we are seeing. We don't know the result. Why? Because there is nothing right now in the input. Uh, fortunately, there is a way to add an image the, in a temporary way, just to work here. It's not exported, it's not included in your project, it's just here to work. So I have one here, so I'm going to do Control C and Control V to add it to my uh, unsaved package right now that I just created. And I just drag and drop this here. So now I have my input here, I have my swirl node, I can see the effect, and this is sent to the final output. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to change a bit that, make it a bit bigger. You see that the effect is applied in a different way, like that, for example. And uh, so it works. I have this and, I, uh, and it will output always this. But what is important when you create filters is to give some control to the final user. And we can do this easily by going here and almost well, all the parameters, at least most of them, you can expose them, which means um, putti putting them available for the final user. You do this by just here selecting my node. My parameters are here and if I click here, I can say expose as new graph input, which is a way to say expose this parameter. So I'm just clicking on it. And I can give a, a name. So identifier, is, it's an internal name. You, you don't care that much about it, at least not for this example. But the label is the name that will be uh, displayed for the final user. So here it's important because if you just put amount, well, the final user may not know what it is and it may be he or she may be afraid to touch it. So we are going to call it swirl amount like that. So we are almost done. What I'm going to do now is to select this graph here to get to the parameter of the full graph, uh, which means my tool finally. And in the attribute, I can give a name. So once again, this is the name within Substance Designer, but still I'm going to call it swirl amount, uh, swirl, uh, VG swirl, for example, VG for Vincent Go, it's me, uh, VG swirl. And then second one, I'm going this is the label, so once again, the name that will be uh, displayed uh, when we are here. So VG Swirl, like that. I can put an icon, but as I say, um, Photoshop will generate it for me. So I, I, I don't mind at the moment, I can leave it this way. I could add a description, a category. You can also put here just to help it a bit in case there is a dump. You can say that it's a filter, it can be still useful. In that case, once again, when there is an input, it will uh, uh, consider, consider it as a uh, as filter. So we are good to go. Now we are going to publish this. So to publish, I just have to select my package and here I have the option to publish. So I just click on it and I can send in different applications from the Substance Red ecosystem. But in our case, we are going to publish it. Maybe later, uh, if uh, many people are using the Photoshop filter, we may add the option to send directly to Photoshop, but it's not there yet. So publish. Here I have to first uh, select a location. So just doing this. Um, I'm going to go to document. I made a specific folder for that document. Project, whip, uh, live stream, assets. And I have my English here. And we're going to call it uh, uh, VG underscore or semicolon uh, swirl. It's not called semicolon. I forgot the name for that. And Say so this is the location for uh, the SBS AR, which is the, the filter that you can share be within application. 
so, so it's there. No, as I didn't save my um, my package yet, it will ask me also. Okay, you have to save your package. So un peu le the same. So this is a SBS in that case. This is my working file for Substance Redesigner. And that's it. So just with this node, I created a really simple filter. Let's try it now. So this I don't need. Photoshop here. I just click on the plus button. I'm going to go to uh, not this one. Document project. And here I have my SBS AR. Just open it. You see that the thumbnail is generated for me. And now if I click on it, I have it here. And I also have like the amount like that. You can change play with that. This is my first filter. And you see that it's not complicated. Uh, regarding parameter, you are not limited at all um, with all the, the amount of parameter you can uh, um, publish. Uh, just keep in mind that uh, you have to keep it simple. In You are not forced to, but you want your other user to use it. Sometimes one of the um, reflex when you start with a Substance 3D designer, I'll say, oh my God, I'm going to expose everything. And so people will have the full control. But so, sometimes it's a bit daunting people because people don't know what to change, etc. So try to keep it at the minimum to 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 get the, the effect you want. That's, uh, that's something important. Now we have seen how to make for, to generate just one image like that. Um, now we are going to see how to make this to generate a full material. So I'm, I'm going to create another graph, Control N, but this time I won't start from uh, nothing. I will take a metallic roughness one. I could take also Adobe standard material, it, it would work. So doing this, I have this output which are there for me by default. And we are going to start from that. Once again, I need to grab the information from the layer. So input color. I'm going also to copy past this image here so we see what we are doing. And what I'm going to do here is to create a filter that I, we will call gold is best. Uh, why? First, because gold is best. And second, because it's, it really helps uh, visualizing, visualizing uh, the, the material. Uh, I mean the result as a material. What we're going to do is take this and try to make like a, a golden printed uh, sculpting or something like that. The result won't be the most beautiful you see, but at least you will get the idea how it works. So to do this, first thing, I'm going to take a base material that we have here, and I'm going to plug it here. So I'm just deleting that. And you see, I can connect all of this like that. So I have, you see, my material. I, we said we want gold and the base material, well, as the name suggests, it allows you to create really easily a base material. And you have some custom preset like gold, which is what we want. So now I have my base gold material. And the great thing with this is that you can say, okay, set up everything for me, but I'd like to have the control on uh, one specific channel. You have to understand that to build the material, you have to rely on different images like this one, which are the output. And all these images are storing a specific element, uh, uh, information element of the material. Here you have the base color, the normal map, which is like to how to add fine details, relief to your material, the roughness to control if it's matte or shiny, metallic to define if it's metal or not, Ambient occlusion, which is like a self uh, shadowing on, on the object that can be useful, and the height map to define well the height of each part of the material. This is how it's done. So basically, if we summarize, we can say that that Substance 3D Designer is an image generator, and in the case of a material, a multiple image generator to feed a material. So in that case, I want to affect this normal map here to add some relief that will be generated from this image. To do this, I'm going to use an old node, uh, still relevant in some cases, like which is the bitmap to material light. 
So this node is generating all the these maps based on one image. It tries to create a material from an image. So you see that now it applies the diffuse, but you see that it makes it made normal, a specular, a glossiness. Actually, I don't need all this stuff. I don't want the diffuse. I want just, in my case, uh, maybe just the height map. Let's see the height map. May work. We will try. Take these two. And here I'm going to just open the height and plug it here. Oops, sorry. Like that. So let's see, in theory, this base material, when we you plug a height, it also generates a normal map. It does, yet it's not super strong, so I'm going to see here to push way more. I'm going to put like uh, 20. Whoa, I put way too much. <laughs> 2000, 20. And now you see that we have a preview, like it, it, it kind of works. Uh, it gives like a, like a golden uh, sculpting, flat sculpting of my result. I don't want to spend time refining the, the, the visual quality of the result because I want to, to show you that. And now, uh, let's say I'm here. We can also, I think we are good with that. So let's export it. I didn't even uh, applied well, I didn't apply anything. I just leave it this way. There is no parameter, but still it will work. So let's go on the title, publish, publish. What do I want to publish? Well, same place, but with the gold is best name. And when I publish, it will request that I save my project. Like that. No. Let's remove that for now. Let's import gold is best. You see that now I have the preview form. It looks like a material, so it tells you, okay, okay, this will use the Substance Engine 3D uh, rendering capabilities. So just clicking on it, and I have the result. And if I go, you see that I have my light properties. I can change the height of the lighting like that I can change the I can rotate where it comes from and also I should have the displacement which is working let's see yes because if I can put it flat or not that flat why because I have um, I have a height map so this allows me to simulate the, the displacement of uh, vertical displacement of my of my result of my material so yeah, we are, we are quite good. So we made the flat example, which will generate just one plain image, which is more than enough in most of the cases. And uh, we have made like a, a real material based on your layer, which is great. Now I want to, we are going to make one, which is this one. Thank you, John. Uh, John, that I think is uh, on Mastodon, is a heavy user of Mastodon, sharing uh, and uh, really interesting stuff. If you are on Mastodon, if you are not, I invite, I'm inviting you to go. This is uh, a good platform. Not enough people, in my opinion, so that's why you have to be there. So how to make that? We this is something which is a bit more complex, but still it's it's kind of easy. So what I'm going to do. Yes, John is asking if it's only available in the Photoshop beta. Correct. The, at the moment, this is just in the Photoshop beta. So the more people don't hesitate to talk about it, to spread it, to make your first filters. Uh, because to me, for example, if you take the Substance Free ecosystem, that's one of the reasons underneath the success of the Substance Free format. The fact that a part of the community can go into Designer and build some awesome stuff that they can share with the rest of the community. And I would say each generation, it's not exactly generation, but each time a new node is created, it, everyone is benefiting uh, it and the community gets better and better and better. And I think it can make the same effect for Photoshop. Well, to me, it's, it's opening the doors to like an immense creation uh, for Photoshop users. So 
I am pretty sure not every Photoshop user will want to, to, to go into designer, but I'm also pretty sure that they will be eager to use new filters made by uh, awesome people. So how to do that? So as you can see, there is uh, four colors. There is few elements like the stripes amount. I can control if I want more like that or, or less like that. And they're getting bigger. You can choose the angle, etc. So I'm going to replicate most of this, but not everything. So let's go here into designer. As you have seen, um, I have I have it. Uh, I think I open it. Posterize is here. Yes. So let's look at it. So it will lo look like that. So it's not a lot of nodes. Um, I tried to explain. So we are going to make this create the stripes to prepare the image. The quantized version we may not do it. It's not uh, that important. Uh, but we uh, are going to make the preserve uh, luminosity parameters. And I'm going to explain how to make the gradient. There is two ways. Uh, this one is a bit more technical, and I, I was helped by Nicolas Verman on this one. Uh, still logical, but as uh, these nodes are more advanced, I'm going to show you more this technique, which is a bit bigger, so but it's uh, simpler as well. But before to start this, I want to uh, spend some time on a specific element. If you see in uh, here in Painter. I use a square image and uh, this is uh, something that I made on purpose because although you can use a um, non-square ratio, um, you have to know that designer is working al is always wor working with square, uh, square of two uh, sizes. So it will, it will be 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, uh, 124, etc. Which is not a big deal if it remains square because if you have, for example, uh, 1,000 1, by 1,000, it will convert in 1,024 and at the end in Photoshop, it will put it back at its uh, original size. But when you have like the ratio like um, um, HD, like uh, um, 1980 by uh, uh, 20 by uh, 1080, for example, what could happen is if you apply, let's say, I don't know, a blur, it may be distorted, meaning like it's more blurred, blurred in a direction um, than the other. That could happen. So what I did to, to do this, I created a small template, which is exactly made to, to fix that. So the template is here. And the good news is if you look at the description of uh, this uh, live stream, you have an access so you can download it. So what we did is first I, uh, we talk with the dev team who make that and we say that would be great to get access to the current Photoshop uh, document dimension. And to do this, they implemented in the Photoshop Substance Engine a specific variable which is called document input size. So what it does, uh, it just grabs the size. So in my case, what I did, I used that and I created here a way to calculate the ratio, taking like the width and the height and make it just dividing the width by the height and it gives me a ratio. So by default, you see it's one because uh, right now there is like 124 by 124, but uh, even if I put an image here, it won't change anything because it it will happen in Photoshop, not here. Still, uh, still it's useful. And so here, what I do once I have this ratio, I first deform the image within Designer, just within Designer, uh, to get the same ratio than the one which is uh, within uh, uh, Photoshop. Then. Here you can apply your magic, uh, whatever change you want to make, you make it here. And at the, at the end, I just revert back to the original scale and we send it to Photoshop. This way, we deform at the right uh, scale, we apply the effect and we get back to the size. This way you don't have any uh, horizontal or vertical deformation. Once again, it's in the, um, uh, you have it in the, in the description of this video. And on my size, what I did is if I create a new one like this one at the bottom, I put it as a template. So you can do that going to the, the installation uh, document. There is a, a folder to do this. That could be the subject on another topic. So if I just click on that, 
and I say, okay, you see that it replicates directly what I need to do. So as I know I say what it's about, I'm going to remove like this make your work. And also this is something that I may add to the, um, to the template, but here I think we can put a portal. So I will say ratio value. And now I have a portal, so I don't have this green uh, link between my, um, my graph, it's easier. Okay, so let's make the magic just to make sure and I won't trick you and I'm, I'm telling you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pin this one as a reference and get back to the one I'm going to do now. Just closing what is useless. The swirl is done. Um, so I pin this one, getting back on the new one we are going to work on. And I'm going to, I have a posterizer. I'm going to put it on the left here on my screen so you don't see it, but to my size, I can refer to it. And also there is few nodes that I will copy past. So we will save some time. Um, first thing I'm going to do is to take like, uh, to make the stri stripes, uh, we're going to focus on that first. So let me remove that. Here I'm going to control C, control V, the image. Once again, we want to see what we are doing. So here nothing happens because once again, it's a, it's an image which is uh, squared and whatever, this value is changed by the Photoshop uh, is, uh, um, uh, Substance 3D engine, sorry. Okay, so to do stripes, I could use the stripes uh, one that is here. There is a, most in most of the case, if you are trying to do something, just type it. Sometimes there is already nodes which are existing. This one is nice, but I'm not 100% satisfied because if I change the amount of stripes, it changed also the uh, the anger, which is made for a good reason. It, it's made so it uh, it always styles, uh, which means that the repetition is perfect. But in my case, I don't care that much about the repetition because it will be one single image, which is not made to tile. So to do this, I'm going to use a tile sampler. A tile sampler like uh, this one. So, and here I can play with the parameter, etc. but I have one which is already done here. So I'm going to copy it here. So I, I plug, I changed it this way. So you see that what ch I changed is the size. Uh, let me see this one, sorry. You see that in, in um, X, I made a wider one. So they are on top of each other and I just diminished the scale to 0 0.5. So, well, I could do that, it's kind of easy. So size three here and I diminish the scale to 0 0.5. So I have these stripes. So this is my base for the stripes. Now what we are going to do is just add a safe transform, which give, which uh, will you, which we will use to give some controls to offer some controls to you, the user. So the first control is the tiling here. So we can define the repetition. So let's expose it now. We can say stripes amount. Okay, we can say default one, min max, it's fine. And also we have the rotation. So this is a safe transform. So by default, it's made to just make 45 degrees um, rotation in order, in order not to break the repetition. Like if you see here, you see that it works. But once again, we don't care that much because it's a single image. It's not made to tile. So I'm going to use this one like that. Let's put this at the moment and I'm going once again to expose this. So one, so expose and stripes rotation. Okay, so we already have two parameters. Now let's focus on uh, this image. So I'm going to make a bit more space here. First thing we are going to, we want to apply a kind of a gradient composed of four colors. To apply it, we are going to use the grayscale, val grayscale values of the image. So to do that, we are going first to convert it to grayscale with the grayscale conversion node. As it's um, poster, like a posterizer effect, um, generally uh, we want more contrast between zones like this. 
So I'm going to add a contrast luminosity node and push the contrast to 0 0.5. Just checking, um, no, there is no more question at the moment. So let's continue. So I have that, happy with that. Now we are going to blend them with this. Blending is like uh, putting one layer on top of the other in um, in Photoshop. Here we use the blend node. So the first layer would be in the background and this one in the foreground. I'm going to change the blending mode like we would do in Photoshop and I will pass it to multiply. So it works, but it's a bit violent. Um, so I could here, I, I can change here, for example, and uh, sorry, and change this way and apply this way. Actually, that works. So I'm going to put that to 0 0.1 and I think maybe 0 0.2. That's something that I could expose, but for this example, I, I, I won't. And maybe, okay, this is fine. Maybe I'm going to add more here, like 20, 24, 24 by default. Okay, so I have my base, uh, which is great. Now I want to uh, apply the color. Um, so first thing first, we are going to create this color. I need four. So uniform color, I'm going to create one and I will do control D, control D, control D like that. And here I have the color on the left here. So I'm going just to uh, color pick them to reapply like this for the first one. So we have it here. I select the second one. It's a red. And the third one, it's a light blue. We are going to offer the control to the final user. Oh, sorry, not this one, this one. And where I am here, did I? Oh, oh yes, it's good. And now this final one here, it's a light yellow. So if you want to display them properly, you can double click and you will see. It. So at first, when I uh, used that, uh, when I created that, we, we made like a really clever stuff with uh, Nicolas Wierman, which, uh, which was like using, well, it does not work here. So I'm going to show more in the original graph here. We uh, exposed first this color and then uh, we create here, created here a pixel processor. So once again, don't learn right now what a pixel processor is. Uh, it's a bit advanced and actually in two weeks I made a, an introduction to this node specifically. So see you in, uh, in two weeks to understand. But what I did here, you see that it's a four pixel by one pixel uh, node. So there is just four pixel and that's it. So we went into that. Uh, and what we said is, okay, uh, grab the, the position of uh, here, a uh, pixel processor works for each pixel. So what we say is for each pixel, grab the position in, in X and multiply it by the size of uh, this image. So four pixels, so multiply it by four, basically, and then floor the value. So it means uh, what it does, it, it will give like uh, four numbers, which are 0, 1, 2, 3. Because if it's 0 0.2, the floor value will return 0. If it's 1.3, it will return 1. And then we say, we put some condition. We say, okay, if it's 0, uh, display the color, uh, the first color. But if it's not 0, then, then we are going to check if it's 1. If it's 1, you, you output this color. If it's not one, let's check if it's two. In that case, you showcase the third color, and if not, the fourth color. And this way, it gives you something like that. It displays the four color that it was. So it works. And then after, we use like a smart, uh, where are we, sorry, uh, here. We, did, we made some smart ma math just to make like a linear, linear interpolation between all the colors. So that works well, but once again, it's a bit advanced and it does not really help under understanding. So what I did, I used another technique which works well, but it may be a bit clearer for you, especially if you, if you are starting. So let me copy past this. Um, just this, Control C. Going to, 
that here. I'm just going to remove this to rematch. I'm going to explain you why later on. Okay, so we did that. So what I did, I say, okay, if we are we have four colors, we want to blend them together. Let me take that. I'm going to change the size also because I made some optimization like that. Okay, so we say, okay, fin finally, this gradient is composed of a gradient between these two nodes, then of a gradient between these two nodes, and then a gradient between these two colors. So I say, let's let's create this gradient and then let's rebuild them together. So let's go here. I'm going, I made some, once again, some optimization. Okay, so I, you see that here I made this three gradient. How, how I did that? Well, I used this gradient linear as a mask to blend between these two colors. So I have my first gradient, then I, I made this one, and then I made this one, like that. We can see like it made the gradient. And once again, I use a pixel processor, which is an advanced node. But if I go here, what I did is once again, look at the position, what I said, sorry, let's go back. You see that I plugged the first gradient, which is uh, input zero, then input one and input two. So I put this this uh, three gradients. And what I said within that is okay, let's look at the position. And if the position is less than a third of the full uh, width, well, you display the first gradient, which is input zero. If it's not the case, well, let's look if it's two thirds of it. I took that and I multiplied by two. So let's look if it's two thirds. So if it's the case, you display the second gradient, which is input one. And if it's not the case, you display that. So what it does, it's at the beginning from here to here, it displays the first gradient, then the second, and then the third. So once again, this is something that is a bit advanced, but you get the logic. Now, what we want to do is to use a node called dynamic gradient. And this node is awesome because it allows you to uh, use the black and white, the grayscale information of an image and to remap colors of another image. Like in that case, this one. That's why here I made some optimization and I diminished the size to one pixel because I just need a line. I, I just need one horizontal line, not more. So why creating the other pixel? And if I plug it here, you see that directly it will tint my image and we will get the result we want. Because you see, it look at the gradient horizontally. You can change that depending on what you have, but in our case, that's fine. And I have my gradient dynamic. So I could plug that here. We'll have then the result that we want, which is great. But if you remember, um, I like it. Um, that could work. And if you look at the graph level, you see that we have some parameters which are interesting. Um, so document input size, we don't want to judge that and it won't appear in, uh, in Photoshop. This is the technical parameter to grab the size, uh, the, the dimension of your document. But we have the stripe amount. So if I look here, Here I can define, sorry, let's go here, the amount of stripes, the rotation of the stripes, um, which is fine. Now what I want to do as well is to expose the color because I want the final user to get the color. So go here, once again, always in top right, you just expose as new graph input, color one. Let's do some monkey work. It's a bit repetitive, but someone has to do it. Color two. Once again, if you have question, that's a good moment. Feel free to ask in the chat. Color three. And, and, and. Color four. Okay, so if I double click here, you see that now the colors are available, which is great. And now what I said is, this result is fine, but sometimes it's interesting to say, you know what, I want this new color, that's why I'm using the, this filter, but I'd like to 
keep this luminosity because I think there is more information. That could be the case. Um, so what we can do is uh, we are going to create a switch. A switch will let you choose between um, two uh, conditions, uh, two situations, two results, uh, just with the button. You say, I want this one or I want this one. So first of all, I'm going to reapply the luminosity. I'm going to create the one with the previous luminosity. To do this, we have a luminosity node. So at the bottom, I plug the one, the original one, and at the top, I'm plugging the luminosity I want to apply. And personally, I really love the way it looks this way. That's uh, We see a bit less the stripes, that's a choice, but still, uh, I really love it. Maybe what I'm going to do here is to make the stripes a bit more visible, like that. Okay, so now I have these two versions, as I, and as I told you, we have to use a switch and to expose one parameter to, to give the control to the user. So like this, and I'm going to plug that here. I'm going to put it to false by default, so it's the default one. And I'm going to expose this switch here, and I will say, I will call it reapply luminosity. And by default, you see that it's false, which is uh, fine. Like that. We are almost done. Now what we can do is just to go in the graph parameters. We have the values here. My reapply luminosity, I, I'd like to change the position and to put it at the top before the color. So you see that I can move that. I want to put this one just for the sake of uh, clarity at the bottom. And if I look at the attribute, I'm going to call that VG new posterizer, like that. The icon, as I said, we don't need to specify anything. And we are good to go, so I'm going to save that. And let's call it a new posterizer. Like that. And now I'm going to publish it. So once again, to publish, you select the package publish. As I saved my file, it uh, directly prompt me to so save it at the same uh, place. And I can see that I made like a, a bad name. So I'm going just my substance uh, like that. VG new posterizer. I think I gave a wrong name for my a working file. Okay, so publish, yes. Now let's go to Photoshop and import this new one. I'm just going to delete this one so we are clear. New pasteurizer. And if I click on it, now it works. I can choose the stripe amount like that. I can reapply the luminosity like that. I can choose the color like that. Okay, I think we have seen everything we wanted to see. So let's go back a bit to the chat. This is how um, parametric filters in Photoshop works, especially how you want you can apply them, but most important, how you can create your own. Once again, if you want to get into this, you love it. Uh, first, don't hesitate to share this live stream. I think the more people know that it's possible, the more interest uh, we will have around this. And also on our side, we can think about, uh, uh, right now, as I see, it's a plugin uh, integration. I hope one day it will be like a native integration, which means that it will be even more uh, even faster. So once again, this is uh, really up to you. We do what the community wants. So if we see a lot of interest, well, um, we'll put some resource on that. Uh, what else to say? Um, well, nothing much. I'm looking at the chat. I don't see any more question. Thanks again for watching. Um, in two weeks, as I said, I will talk about um, 
the pixel processor node in Substance 3D Designer, which is an advanced node, and we'll make an introduction about it. So how it works, how you can, when to use it, and uh, and how you can take advantage of it. If you have any question, if you have any feedback, feel free to contact me. I'm uh, on many different social networks. You can find me also on Reddit. You can find me on LinkedIn, everywhere. So uh, and in the comments, of course. If you like, just put a like, subscribe to the channel. You know how it works. Thanks again and see you in two weeks. Bye bye.